Well, hello, guys, and welcome to our Calvary Baptist Church Elementary School lesson for Sunday, May the 9th, 2021. So if you're watching this video on Sunday, May the 9th, you know it's Mother's Day. So please remember to uh, wish your mother or grandmother, um, whoever it is that um, represents a mother figure in your life, certainly make sure that you wish them a happy Mother's Day. So as you guys know, we've been talking about really training and making sure that we are living the best life that we can for God. And so in a moment, we're going to kind of talk a little bit more about that. And we're going to look at the scripture and everything as well. But you know, one of the things that um, I was reminded of as I was preparing, you know, for this lesson, because it really kind of talks about uh, preparing yourself for running or, um, you know, cheerleading, school, football, whatever the case is. And one of the sports that I like a whole lot is track and field. And so one of the things that I've had a chance to do is uh, in previous years, my wife and I, we've had a chance to be a part of um, a track club that's called Delaware Elite Track Club. Our children had a chance to be a part of that uh, track club as well. And so you've probably heard of different teams that travel around, traveling soccer, traveling cheerleading, cheerleading, lacrosse, field hockey. Well, for track, we also have that as well um, in many of the states. But really what it was, was a lot of, um, you know, children and youth would come together. Most of the time it would be during the summertime. So it be, it's called a summer track team or summer track club. And we had kids from I mean, we used to have the different age groups, names, Bantam and all of that, but little kids, maybe four, five years old, all the way up to teenagers in preparation for them to go to college or whatever next it was. But here's the thing, and we used to travel across the different states and competed in for different, different teams in different states. But the uniqueness behind this track club or this traveling team is that it really teaches the different skills of whatever that sport is. It helps to discipline you. It helps to train you for your actual race. And sometimes it was some hard training uh, that uh, the athletes would be doing. Um, and if it was in the summertime, sometimes it'd be hot outside as well. But what we wanted them to do was to be disciplined. We wanted to teach them about form, running form, breathing, different drills, different techniques, stretching, so that they could perform better and better. And so that reminds me of our lesson as we're um, sharing for this Sunday or for this week is really disciplining ourselves so that we can be the best person we can be in our relationship with God and our life for God. So the same way that, you know, we're training, sometimes if you get ready to run, you need to stretch and, you know, you need to make sure you're warming up. I mean, we put so much focus on making sure that we're ready to compete in whatever it is we're doing athletically. We need to make sure that we're also ready to live a life for God. And today we want to talk about just a few more things that can help us. So last week we talked about prayer. So remember we did the Lord's prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we talked about how prayer is one of the things that can help us be all that we can be in our relationship with God. And so today we're going to talk about hearing from God. We're going to talk about listening. So same thing when, you know, my wife and I, we would we'd be helping to coach the different athletes. The athletes had to listen to what we were saying. You know, if we said, hey, you know, take two laps to warm up and make sure you listen. Okay, make sure you stretch. Make sure you do your drills. Okay, pump your arms, control your breathing, all of that. If they listen, then they would see a uh, better performance. If they didn't, didn't listen, you know, then there'll be some other results may not have been so favorable when it was actually time for them to race or to practice. Same thing with our relationship with God. There are different ways for us to be able to listen to God. And one of the key ways to listen to God is to be able to read his word, reading the Bible. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about listening to God today and the benefits of listening to God compared to not listening to God. So let's go ahead and pull up our um, lesson for today so that we can go ahead and get started. All right, so let's take a look at this here. All right, so I wanna blow this up a little bit so we can see a little bit bigger as well. 
All right. So again, we're talking about listening to God. Remember, so 5K, of course, that's about 3.1 miles. I enjoyed uh, running, running the race, but we're really kind of talking about our lesson here. And so remember, we talked about commitment is making a plan and then putting it into practice. And so if you compare this to athletics, if you compare this to school, again, like we were talking, you know, you make a plan, but then you got to put it into practice. It's no good to have a plan if you don't do the plan, if you don't actually practice the plan. So making a plan and then putting it into practice. All right, so let's, we're going to take a look at our, our scripture today. And so this is coming from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 29. And so let me just kind of build this out so that we'll know what's, what's taking place here. So Jesus is on a mountain and he's actually is more of like a hill and he's teaching his disciples. So he's having a conversation with them. And what they're doing is they're listening. So Jesus is literally sitting down, kind of almost like I'm sitting down, and he's talking to his disciples, the, the people that, you know, they're following him and uh, they're listening to his teachings and everything. But again, this scripture is going to talk about how important it is to listen and to do what it is that God is saying for us to do. And so Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 29, Jesus says this. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, will liken, I will liken him to a wise man who built a house on a rock. So what he's saying is, if you, if you hear what I'm saying and you do what I'm saying, you will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And then the rain descended, the floods came. The winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. So again, Jesus is saying, if you hear what I'm saying and you do what I'm telling you to do, you will be like the person who builds a house on a rock. In other words, a strong foundation, so that when the rains come and the floods come and the winds blow and beat against that house, right, the strong winds, the house won't fall because it was built upon a rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So he's making a comparison. If you hear what I'm saying and you do it, you'll be like the person that builds your house on a rock. If you hear what I'm saying and you don't do it, you'll be like the person, a foolish person, who built his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods come, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so again, Jesus is saying, if you hear what I'm saying, and you do it, your, it'll be like a person whose house is built upon the rock. Different things will come your way, but you won't fall. You, you won't fall down. You won't crumble. I mean, imagine a house completely falling down. He's saying, nope, because you have a strong foundation of hearing what I'm telling you and doing it. But then he says, but if you, you know, hear what I'm saying, but you decide not to do it, you'll be like the person who built their house on the sand. So you can imagine sand is very, it moves, right? A rock is stable, sand moves. When the rain comes and the floods and the winds and beat, that house is going to fall and great is going to be the fall. And so after Jesus uh, had ended his sayings or his teachings, the people were astonished at his teaching. And for he taught as one having authority and not as described. And so what is our lesson for today in this one here? Practice hearing from God. And what, there's so many different ways to practice hearing from God. So you may say, I can't hear God. Like I can't hear God's voice loud. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But there is always this conscious feeling on the inside of us that a lot of times is leading us to do the right thing, you know, or, or, to, or telling us, hey, that's the wrong thing and don't do it. Some people call it conscious. Um, but that can be God saying, hey, here's the right way that you need to do it. And we have to make a decision to do that. But as I take the time, as you're doing now, listening to these different lessons, reading the Bible, praying, it helps you to be able to hear God more. It helps you to be able to get God's direction a whole lot more. So one of the best ways to know what God wants you to do is by reading the Bible. 
is by watching these videos and these different lessons so that you'll know, okay, God wants me to do this and not that. And so again, our lesson for today, our theme or our focus point is practice hearing from God. Now, what I wanna do is play for you a quick little video. I enjoy our little videos um, that really ties in to this lesson that we just watched here. So let's go ahead and watch our little video and then we'll come back and wrap things up. Stories of the Bible. The parable of the two builders. This is Jesus. Hey -o. Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water. Oh, hey guys. And even raised people from the dead. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up to the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. He asked them, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Hey, I'm gonna build here. Yeah, I'm gonna build out there. All right, do it yourself. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Oh, yeah. When the flood waters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it was well built. I'll get it here. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. All right, hey, it's nice. Like a person who builds a house on sand. Uh oh. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. All right. Yep. So amazing. So I like showing the video so that you can kind of see a, a, a visual of what it is that we're talking about here. So again, anyone that builds their house uh, upon the sand, as we just saw in that video, it really shows that it will fall. And so practice hearing from God. So again, to wrap things up, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, training the body has some value but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. So again, it talks about, you know, it's important of training our physical body, but also being godly has value in every way. Practicing being godly, practice being who God has created and wants us to be. And again, from today's lesson, the key point is practice hearing from God. So here's what I encourage you to do. You know, so our scripture again was Matthew chapter seven, verse 24 through 29. So hopefully you have a good Bible or however it is that you usually read the Bible. I encourage you this week, look back over that scripture, because again, one great way of hearing from God was the best way to hear from God is by literally taking the time <laughs> to take, get our Bible and read what God wants us to read the sayings of God, the teachings of God, right from the Bible. And so some people say, I don't know, I can't hear from God. Yep, you might not hear him like audibly, but guess what? You can read God's Bible. You can read the Bible and read the teachings, and that is a way for you to hear from God. But remember, the important part is not just hearing, but also practice hearing from God, but also doing what God says, okay? So let's go ahead and wrap things up. We'll go ahead and close out in prayer and then um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for the teachings of Jesus that's teaching us that, that we have two decisions. We have a decision we can make out of two. We can hear you, but it's also important to do what we hear. But if we hear you and don't do it, we'll be like the person who builds their 
life or their house on the sand. And so when things come and things happen that may be challenging, if we built our life on the sand because we're not doing what it is that you've taught us to do, it will fall. So help us, God, today and each day to hear you, to take the time to read your Bible, to listen to your teachings, to pray, and then also to do what we know that you are telling us to do. So, Father, we thank you. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.